G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday sort of lunchtime here in Australia and the market actually has gone up. I thought we were going to have a retracement coming uh, with the weekend. It still may come, we'll have to wait and see. But at the moment, I mean the market just keeps moving and it's sitting at a very important level at the moment. So 42,000, hence why I still think we may see some retracement from, retracement from here. But I could be completely wrong. I'm never offering you financial advice. And we'll have a look at that when we get into the chart. But let's have a look at the market though. 1.64 trillion. So starting to make some really good moves. Bitcoin dominance now above 48%. I think this will continue to rise. Bitcoin's going to move. It's going to move fast. It will draw you know, some of the money out of the altcoins. They'll still go up. They just won't be going up anywhere near as much as Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, look, gas prices $1.30, not too bad, but again, not great. We're still a couple of days away, August 4th, it's July 31st at the moment, so four more days. And the EIP 1559 will hopefully be done and dusted, and we'll see how much it really curbs the Ethereum fees. You know, it needs to be under a dollar. If it can't stay under a dollar, it's just not going to work. And then, unfortunately, we have to wait for... Uh, you know, ETH 2.0, whenever that may be, which could be at the end of the year. Ethereum cannot and will not go mainstream until it has really, really low fees. In the sense, you know, people might be able to handle a dollar if they're sending, you know, $10, 20 $30 uh, of money or more. They might put up with it. And again, that's only might. Uh, you know, third world countries and that won't. So that is the issue for Ethereum. So we definitely need this to come down. But I mean, look. Bitcoin 4.76% in the last 24 hours. That's pretty good. And we can see some of the other coins, you know, kind of some are up, some are down. And again, everyone I think is just waiting at the moment because this $42,000 level is very, very important. But look, let's have a look. What's done the best in the last 24 hours? What's been the biggest mover in the top 100? Boom. Good Lord. Bitcoin Cash. 63% I mean that has jumped obviously you know some people probably know something about that that I don't know uh, but in all fairness I think it's just because Bitcoin's going up that is simply why uh, that is starting to move up and they know that when Bitcoin goes up all the other Bitcoin you know again there's Bitcoin gold as you can see that's starting to move as well they all start to go up as well flow network oh Neo uh, very nice move congratulations stacks a good move link a good move uh, Thor chain there you go coming back even though it's had attacks and all the rest of it we can see a number of good moves in there some really good double digit ones and then just some you know uh, high sort of single digits and there'll be some that go into the low single digit percentages as well but as we say any gains a good gain but really that 15% plus in 24 hours that's when we're starting to feel pretty happy and anything under that will just take it because again any gains a good gain all right considering the market's up 1.3 percent what about losses though is there any sort of you know there's always going to be a loss but is there any bad losses in the top 100 in the last 24 hours this will be interesting safe moon continues to go down i mean <laughs> it is worth almost nothing at the moment you know uh, micro points of a, a cent and you know continuing to go down so maybe the safe moon uh, bubble is completely and utterly done we'll have to wait and see there's no guarantees synthetics network down a little bit but it's just been hovering around the con in that nine to eight dollars for a while and as i said yesterday they now have full uh, layer two solutions right across the synthetics board now so uh, not just staking now it's also on their uh, Exchange Coenta, they've also got the Thales option, so you can bet on uh, the Olympic uh, medal count and tallies and events and things like that. So lots of really exciting things happening for Synthetics Network. Uh, Quant Network got a little bit of a pullback, but I mean, look, these losses, they're almost nothing. There's one almost double-digit loss, Safe Moon, and everything else is then low single-digit losses. Uh, again, Theta, Theta Fuel, uh, Amp Doge and things like that. I did get some Theta and some Theta Fuel a while ago. Uh, I wanted to get in and I just thought now was a pretty good time. Not the best time. I could have got in earlier and it would have been cheaper. But I had to make a move at some stage and now I have myself some Theta and some Theta Fuel. And I do plan to get some more in all fairness. Uh, I've been feeling like I missed the boat on that. And again, I may still be buying... Uh, at a price that isn't the cheapest, particularly in the bear market, it could go down, but I think it will get up and go on a decent run, uh, and then I should be able to take at least my 
uh, initial money back and then I can simply let the less ride uh, let the rest ride did that sound yeah let the rest ride yep uh, <laughs> and then you know possibly look to buy more uh, in the next bear market as well because they've made some pretty good moves but anyway like I said no real bad losses a couple of nice moves and again that was kind of expected because the whole market is up 3.1 percent now here's what I was saying about is very interesting about the $42,000 mark. I have had these lines in here for, again, since basically sort of way back here. And then we came down, broke back in it, and it really is that kind of $42,000 mark. And that's where we're sitting right at the moment. Now I thought this was going to be a bearish candle yesterday. It was red when I last looked at it. Ended up being green. So that is one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think this is 10 green candles in a row now. One, two, yep, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 green candles. Could we be going for 11 and breaking that $42,000 mark? And then really, as of today, we need to break about sort of 46-ish thousand, 46 and a half thousand dollars because this is where we may get rejected from. And then have a look at this, the 200 day moving averages lining up pretty much with somewhere over around about here. So the 9th of August at the sort of rate we're going, uh, very, very interesting. Are we gonna come back, hit this, and then start to go even lower? Now, I'm not trying to be overly bearish, but we just need to keep these things in mind. It is totally possible. What I am hoping is that we break out then roll over, come back and retest it somewhere, maybe over about here, before we then start to go back upwards again. And we finally get in this long-term upwards sort of channel that we've been in for quite some time. So again, hopefully this will load sooner rather than later. And we can bring this down a little bit. Because again, this is where it started. This is where we had that big dump last uh, March. And then we've just been in this upwards trend ever since. Broken out, came back in, broken out, stayed above it, we're above, had to come back down and retest it. And again, even when we retested from here, we really only kind of went sideways from here. And now we're almost breaking back into this mark. So this is, you know, very, very exciting. Uh, and also a very cautious time because again, we're waiting to see if we can break this. Because if we hit this and go down, then unfortunately, chances are we're probably going to go much lower. Now again, we can hit it, go down a little bit, hit it, go down a little bit, and stay somewhere around about this channel and then break above, and that's fine. But if we do hit it and we have a good sort of uh, retracement, particularly sort of below this level here, before below 36,000, sort of 500, there about 700, uh, then I would definitely be concerned that we're going into an extended uh, bear market. But I don't think that's what's going to happen but it's definitely something that could happen. And again, we've got the big players here now. They want to try and manipulate it. And again, maybe they want to manipulate it from here and we have to come back down and retest this kind of $28,000 level. Uh, very scary, something that's possible, I think unlikely though. So hopefully things you know, remain the same, but I do think we get a retracement in the next day or two, uh, particularly you know if we create a CME gap, although we created a CME gap back here the other week and that didn't get covered. I think it was around 32,000. So that is really something I'm looking for, that if we do get a sell-off, maybe we have to come back down and close the CME gap that was covered, uh, created somewhere around about here. We don't have to, uh, there's no guarantees. Maybe that will be a CME gap that gets closed uh, at the bottom of the next bear market or something, who knows. But you know, most, and it's the high 90 something percent of CME gaps get closed and we've definitely got one back there. All right, only a couple of news stories that we're gonna have a look at. So MicroStrategy have reported a paper loss of roughly 700 million on its BT investment in quarter two, uh, 2021, but vowed to continue purchasing more coins. So it's only a loss in quarter two. Uh, when this market really gets up and starts to move, it's gonna go a whole lot higher. So it'll be very interesting to see. And again, I think, you know, like five, 10, 20 years time, uh, you know, these coins that they uh, bought will be in such profit that you know they're not going to worry about yeah 700 million is a lot don't get me wrong a lot of companies couldn't handle a 700 million dollar loss but i think this will be very short-lived it'll be interesting if bitcoin gets to around about a hundred thousand 
has an 80% retracement, which I'm not sure it'll have an 80% retracement, but it could, that takes it back down to around about sort of 20, 30,000, somewhere about there, because I think we probably go above 100,000, you know, maybe 120, 150. Who knows? Maybe the, you know, 200 and what is it, uh, 88,000 uh, that Plan B was saying. We'll have to wait and see. But micro strategy, their plan is they're just going to buy more. And as Michael Saylor said, he plans to hodl. He's not planning to sell anytime soon. So we'll see how that all goes. All right, Binance have integrated with the big, the one, the only, Polygon. I mean, these guys just continue to get bigger and bigger. Uh, it is truly amazing what Polygon have done. But look, so, same with Binance. Two really big powerhouse players teaming up together. Very good idea. So leading cryptocurrency exchange Binance has completed the integration of Polygon mainnet to support deposits and withdrawals of the Matic mainnet token. So, you know, two big players getting together. It shows that you know where the space is going integration you know multi uh a sort of multi not a multi universe what is it a uh, multi coin universe again inter interoperability that's what i was looking for i mean binance smart chain is basically uh, ethereum it's almost a copy of their uh their code, not exactly, but fairly similar. So it makes sense that they would team up with Polygon. Now, Binance is still facing some more FUD though. So Binance has been banned in Malaysia and given 14 days notice to shut down operations. So it says here, the Securities Commission over in Malaysia has served a public reprimand against Binance, calling for the exchange and all of its entities to cease operations in the country. You're going to see a lot more of this. Uh, it's not done, but I think Binance will eventually have a headquarters somewhere. They will get regulated. That's the things that's holding it back at the moment. CZ knows it, and these things will take some time. And there is some coordinated FUD uh, you know, against Binance at the moment. And look, not just them. I mean, even BlockFi is still under fire. So Kentucky now joins growing list of states targeting BlockFi's Bitcoin savings account. <sighs> They, you know, first they laugh at you, uh, then they, uh, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they try to fight you, then you win. We are in the fight stage at the moment. There are lots of, you know, old traditional finance, old laws, old governments that just aren't ready to move on to the, the future. And they're fighting against this stuff, but it will be a losing battle. I'm not saying BlockFi can't lose. They absolutely could. Uh, it's possible. I just don't think it's likely, but... The old heads, you know, the old minds, the old governments who aren't, you know, progressive and forward thinking, they will get left behind. They will be, they're going to be like the dinosaurs. They will go extinct. Crypto is the future. Everyone with half a brain knows it. The financial system that we have in place, so old finance, traditional finance, it's broken. It hasn't worked. Every time, every single fiat currency that we've ever used that has been controlled by a government central entity has always ended up not failing and going to zero, as some people like to say, but it has basically disappeared because it just gets printed to oblivion. And then they move on to the next one. The US dollar will not last forever. And we can't move on to the Great Britain pound or you know some other dollar. They are all the same. They are all run by governments, they're all run by central banks, and they will print as much of the stuff as they need to keep their pockets lined. Hence why I really don't uh, invest in, in you know old sort of finance stuff too much. There are some shares and stuff uh, I have and I plan to buy some more, but mostly I stay away from that sort of stuff. I just think it's, again, it's all propped up by uh, a fugazi market and I know, I know there's lots of people that will say that about cryptocurrencies but that's people who simply don't understand the space and that is where we are at at the moment we are in the fight stage yes the coins may be going up in price but we are a long way from being able to sort of win the war and then for us to really go mainstream that is going to take time but I think all the regulators and governments probably see the writing on the wall they're just doing everything they can to hold this space down for as long as they can until they get themselves set and like I've said before then you know they have all their rules and regulations have their positions and make sure they're going to get a piece of the pie because that's what it's all about no one wants to miss out on their piece of the pie so regulations taxes you know this that all these committees and everything need to 
to be set up before they can finally release it because they know it pretty much can't be stopped here. And again, the system we have now, old traditional finance, it's broken. It's been broken for a long time. They're kicking the can down the road and they know it is going to fall apart sooner rather than later. We literally are witnessing a complete uh, change that we haven't seen in such a long time. The way we think of money and wealth is being revolutionized right now and it's happening in cryptocurrencies. There's so many interesting projects and things that are coming out right now. I love being in this space and I am going to still love being in this space even when the next bear market comes because I know that is where the real big money is going to be made. If you can get in in the bear market, find some good projects, get in nice and early at a super low price, then you're unlikely. If you're in good projects and you got in at the bottom of the bear market, you will never see those prices again. They will only ever go higher. Don't get me wrong, if you keep buying all the way up, then you're going to see some sort of losses. But what you bought at the absolute sort of, well, not the absolute bottom, but just there about to the bottom, you'll never see those prices again. Like Bitcoin was a dollar once. It's never been back to a dollar after it sort of kept going. Uh, and again, it, you know, every time it sets a new high, it may peak down there for a minute, but generally it hardly ever goes as low as its old all time high. So if you bought Bitcoin under 20,000, depending on how high uh, it goes in this run, because if it only gets to maybe 75,000, then you probably see it under 20,000. But if it goes 100 and plus thousand, I think the absolute low is probably going to be somewhere around $20,000. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. But if it somehow makes it to 288000 then I don't think you're going to see it under probably forty, fifty thousand. It'll be very, very interesting though to see what happens. Yeah, again, if it somehow makes it to 288000 even then I don't know if it would really go much under 100000 That would still be uh, a massive downfall from, you know, Let's round up 288,000, so 300,000 down to 100,000. I mean, that's basically sort of nearly 70% correction right there. Very, very interesting times ahead. All right, I won't take up any more of your time. It's the weekend. I want to get out and enjoy it myself. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.